I feel like we talked about it a bit last series, but this time I feel like when you have a, a four player like Zing Q that's like really greedy, you don't want to be playing against these um, really strong laners. And these uh, so going... teams seem to really understand what they want to ban straight away. <laughs> Yeah, they're going through it pretty quickly. And Timbersaw gets banned first here by uh, Eom. They also banned the Void Spirit uh, early on. We're not going to see that here for uh, neither Jin-Q or XM slash nothing to say. I, I, again, I'm very interested to see what he's going to do in this four position and how CDC are going to react to that. Like, what are they going to ban thinking that maybe jin Because he's kind of the playmaker for this team. A bit how we see FY be the playmaker, but he's also like... I don't know, maybe in more of a role of of being the like the key to the engine here for e home in a way. You know what I mean? Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah. I, I don't I don't think you can ban Jin Q out. I think it doesn't matter what hero he plays, he's always gonna play it in a similar way. I think you should be focusing your banning on probably Faith Bian, um and possibly like some of like the core heroes as well. Like uh, between and nothing to say inside. I probably Silas here is more. I would say. I think that Faith Bian and Faith Bian enables a lot of what Zinku likes to do. Like we saw his clockwork yesterday, right? Was uh, was awesome. Yeah. So speaking of Silas, I said uh, he would go like it at least once in this series. I think that still holds true. So well, Ember's still uh, in the pool, right now. by the way. I think he's a really big one. Could be uh, a four. True. Uh, DP still in the pool as well. DP Oracle, which could be an opening here for E-Home. Oh, there's one. Ooh, there's the Oracle, and sometimes that gets set up with the Death Prophet, right? Yeah, it does. Or, you know, what else could they go for? Uh, I mean, they could go for Ember Oracle if they feel like it would be horrible to play against Grimstroke Ember. Yeah, DK what getting else? banned. Uh, you know, maybe a Beastmaster could go to the way of CDC if that's the play that they want to go in with uh, that double Prime Aurora with the double Phantoms Embrace. Like, that's a very disrupted team fight, and they go to the Ember for Ehome. Doesn't necessarily mean it's nothing to say on the Ember just yet, but, um, you know, it is picked up here, and uh, it could be in a, a multitude of spaces. James really liked his Tusk before for CDC, so they might pick that one uh, here. Works uh, really well with the Grimstroke as well. We've seen them pick up that duo in the first phase before. Um, but if they feel like they need something, they, they might feel like they need something a little bit more lockdown heavy, possibly, against the Ember. Like something like a Nyx Assassin might be a bit better. It's not amazing. Uh, I'm not sure I'm massively into that hero, but uh, we saw Kaka play it really well yesterday. Yeah. Um, it does make Ember's game a little bit harder. Uh, that Kaka game was phenomenal honestly on that nix assassin played it really well so uh, I'll be, he and he's been playing it pretty consistently well uh the last month or so that i've seen him play in cd cda and other chinese tournaments like it's been solid for him but he's not in this series right now it's cdc against e-home not ig we'll see if they go to the nix assassin it would end up being uh james so and they go to Ooh. the rubik and they they go to the Rubik with, uh, you know, no Centaur, but doesn't, you know, that's not a hero he needs to be enabled or anything. And we saw a bunch of good Rubiks yesterday. So did we see James play Rubik yesterday? I don't think we did. I can't remember. Uh, hmm. Do some scouting for me, good sir. You have the links I open. Shall. I shall. I do have all the links open. I like to keep uh, my RAM in use. So let's see. CDC yesterday against IG. There was a uh, Tusk. And then there was a Chen Skyrath. And Grimstroke Tusk again. So we have not yeah. seen James on the Rubik. Interesting. I mean, obviously, all four players at the moment should be able to play this hero. I mean, it's it's been so popular for so long. It's always a solid pick. Uh, Grimstroke Rubik isn't a bad pairing either. Like, they, they do have it at the instant lift available for the Ember now. Like, they have Soulbind as well which if they ever get on the Ember makes this game difficult. I'm still really surprised that DP's been completely untouched so far, though. I think that hero's in a really good spot. And Zinky could still play the Ember, uh, remember, as well. It doesn't have to be a core for E-Home. They are much more likely to switch over to that four. And we saw yes. them play DP Ember before. I'm pretty sure. Didn't Faith Bian play... It, maybe it wasn't E-Home. Maybe it was a different team. But I'm pretty sure we've seen DP Ember as a duo before. 
Um, I think we might have, but going to your point where, you know, they could put the Ember in the four, it's similar to, I think it was you and us, you saw the Bat Rider go from a three to a five just because they had the tools necessary to really deal with it. Um, or was it the Bat Rider? It might have been a different hero that went from the three to the five. And, you know, you could do that here with the Ember moving into the four because they've got that Rubik ready to go and make that game tougher for... Uh, for an ember and now put them into a support role rather than bank it on a core. Interestingly, so they actually picked the Beastmaster for themselves. So both of you are going to be playing that one. Um, they could do the all-out push and go with that Lycan in the safe lane. They could, yeah. Maybe it's, I, I'm assuming it's just a hero they feel really confident with. I don't see any massively particular reason why they would pick it there necessarily. I mean, it's yeah, good to pick their off really there well. in general because it doesn't give away whether the Ember's the core or the support. But even so... I guess it's a hero that doesn't... We've talked about them when they play these greedy fours, though. It's important that you pick a hero that doesn't need too much help in the laning stage because Ember doesn't really help you at all um, until he gets a few levels online. So Beastmaster is one of those heroes that with the boars has a, an okay laning stage no matter what. You know, you can go and pull the waves as well if you wanted to. With the ball, we've uh, we've actually seen what uh, Jinkyu if he's given up first play like all three of those games in that series when he went Clinks, Void, Ember, and it was until he hit uh, those first couple of levels that he was able to accomplish getting, um, you know, uh, accomplish getting a couple kills and assists mm -hmm. here and there. He was not really doing much in lane. But we also saw another Ember that didn't do much in lane and then didn't do much in the game. That might have even been Jinku on the Ember, if I recall. I love that there's an Ember and a Ricky in the game now, and we have no idea which one Zinku's going to play. That's the yeah. four position. That's, um, that that's quite nuts. something. I mean, it doesn't even have to be. They might even last pick his hero and play Ember mid and Ricky won. Like, there's so many different things they can do with their last pick. I think that's a really good TB pick, though. Um, they don't have a save, it's my only worry. Um, but it, it's all physical damage at the moment on E-Home, you know, with this Beastmaster. Ember's kind of like mixed, so it's not quite so bad for Ember, but Ricky doesn't really deal with the TB that well. Like, the Smoke Cloud's nice before TB picks up BKB, but, uh, you know, after that point, Ricky just does so little to him. But it can kind of work That's... the other way as well, where Ricky has really high armor too. That's the army. Terrorblade, I think we saw him play against IG. It didn't end up winning, though. Yeah, this was the one where they picked like really weird timings, and then the TB had his own timing completely, like the rest of his team. Yeah. Um, but obviously something I'm very confident on. Uh, XM played mid Veno yesterday, which is why they've Ooh. banned that one out, um, which shows that it might be a Ember mid then, um, if they're willing to put this... Uh, ban out this Veno. I think it's more likely to be Veno mid now. Or they could could they be baiting them into thinking that? It's the Veno finally getting some bans here, finally getting some respect. You know, I uh, spoke to you about this <gasps> off uh, off camera about how much I love Veno right now. So is it going to be? You, you have your nothing to say, Tinker. By the way, with the Beastmaster on his team as well. You say that to me, and I get so excited. You don't do that to me. The last time you did that, I got so excited, and you went something super like, you know, I think it went DK or something like that. It was something <laughs> very like, oh, okay. Not exciting. It's against but TK's They don't have great catch on C deck either. It's not awful. They, their, draft, their draft would be insanely greedy, but uh, it Get would be into hilarious. their comms. Get into their comms and tell them Tinker. <laughs> I miss that hero. I What's know not tinker many people do, but I love the Tinker. I have no idea. Just say, play the OP hero. The OP god hero. <laughs> and not overpowered, I mean the player. Right, okay, okay. So what, what, are they... what, what does CDC go for here? I really... Their lanes... They need like another run at them hero, I think. Could they are go they... Death Prophet? I mean, they could, but then you've got DPTB. DPTB, where it's like both a double long cooldowns with the meta and the exorcism. So yeah. I don't particularly like it much. I think they need a hero that can fight all the time. Oh, Dazzle. Dazzle, low cooldown hero. Could be a mid-Dazzle. 
Should be mid dazzle. Could be a mid pango or as well mid, with a core. Could be a, a mid Rubik. Oh, please, mid Rubik. That'd be great. I would love to see that. I don't know how good it is, but I assume it's going to be mid dazzle though. Uh, the badge usually works really well with uh, obviously TB's really high physical damage, uh, with the dazzle reducing their armor. <clears throat> Hmm. They have a decent map. Wave clear on C deck as well. It's pretty good. So is that going to be Zinqs Zinqs here, here then? Or are they going to put the Zeus mid? Nothing to say mid. Fifth Beyond on the Beastmaster. Sylar on the Ricky. And uh, Zinqs on the Zeus, I'd assume. Yeah. I, I would four assume. Oracle? Is that really that bad? A Zeus four. Five okay. Zeus. I think it, it's Innocence really on the good. Oracle. There it is. It's really good against TB, right? Because it's super high magic burst up against like a low HP pool hero. I haven't seen Zeus 4 in ages, though. Um, Beastmaster Zeus sounds, sounds like a really good lane. I'd be I'd be frightened if I had to lane against that. I'm going to look over at uh, the amount of heroes that Jin-Q has played so far in this event. <laughs> Maybe he's going for like the, is... the different hero every game meme. Yeah, he's going for the Virtus Pro play. Yeah. That's what it seems like. That was, I think that was genuinely one of the most impressive achievements in Dota. Yeah, I can agree with that. Obviously, it's TI certainly. is like its own level, but to, yeah, to for individuality, with that, to, win, to win every single game with loads of completely different heroes is incredible. It just shows how dominant they were at the time as well. Okay. Okay. I'm looking at all the heroes he's played so far. He has played... Okay. Yeah, he's... What is he playing right now? Zeus. He's playing the Zeus? Yeah, he's played... He hasn't played the Sage Hero twice yet. <laughs> how, he went how, like Dark Willow and uh, Shadow Demon. But that's what I mean. Like, how do you draft against him? Like, he's, he's, he's going to so do the versatile. same thing. It doesn't matter what his hero is. You can't ban him out. It doesn't work. <laughs> Yeah, because there, there, there are four positions that you're, or four position players that you're like, we need to get these heroes out of their hands. But it's like Jinkyu just masters everything. He really is a tricks of, uh, a trickster of many trades, or a jack of all trades is really the uh, phrase there. But trickster of trades keeps it Dota related, especially with a, uh, a Ricky on his team. Hmm. So we'll see him on this Zeus this time. I'm wondering. See what he's able to get done. I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure Dazzle crushes Ember mid, right? So I'm wondering how nothing to say wants to play this lane. Does he want to take Flame Guard at level one and like go and cut the first wave from behind the tower? Thirty seconds to battle. It'll be interesting to see what he does here, or if he feels like he can can just lane against the Dazzle normally. I'm pretty. Is he the highest MMR player in China at the moment? I think he was, right? Nothing to say, yeah. He was number one, and XM's number two. Oh. Battle of rank one versus rank two. That's exciting. All you, uh, <clears throat> YouTube, uh, highlight video makers. Rank one versus rank two. You got your title right there. <laughs> you won't believe what you saw. <laughs> um, this ward's getting more common, by the way. I talked about it yesterday. This, this Radiant uh, top ward. In the mid lane. Like, this one? Uh, yeah, I I feel like we if teams have done their prep though, I should feel like they know this is there now. I'm pretty sure um C Deck placed this one before. I mean it gets you everything you really wanted to get. Apart from vision you... on the high ground. In the mid lane. Uh, yeah. It's not terrible. Now I I regret saying it gives you everything you want to get, but <laughs> Appreciate no, that. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, Ember gets the range coop deny. And he has two salves now, by the way, as well. Yeah, he uh, is really going to try and deal with XM throwing out that Shadow Wave early. I would assume if you're Dazzle, are you even taking Shallow Grave early? Oh, no, no, no. Not as a core. <gasps> well, I've seen even like position three Dazzles take it. You know, like a, a two, one, three situation, but that might be. I feel like it's super situational. It's like, oh, am I gonna die here? Can I take Shallow Grave or somebody I need to save? Do I have a point available? 
Mm -hmm. But other than that, it, I, I agree. It's just poison touch and shadow wave the entire time. Um, if the Ember's uh, really on it as well, he might be able to dodge a shadow wave heal with um, with a slight of fist as well, which would be pretty game winning. Pushing my mic a little bit further away, because uh, reading up, seeing that there's some echo, just making sure. You know, don't want to get everybody coming in twice, you know? What's the problem hearing us twice? You trying to say... Yeah, we're, we yeah. sound very good. I mean, we have silky smooth voices. We don't have the tsunami silk going on, but we sound pretty <laughs> good. You have been denied. So, oh, top so far, ooh, SRF. Innocence? A lot of damage on Innocence, but the Blink Strike back onto James. The Fade Bolt was thrown onto the Oracle. He gets the Salve off. That might be enough health back into his health pool right there to stay What's alive. What's that doing? arm on a Sylar. Uh, Jeez. You know, as he wanted to play aggressive. Fortune's in again, James. Purifying Flames, and yes, he'll get a kill there on Innocence, but the first one ends up going the way of Ehome. Perfect move there, and that is, you know... The salve that just allowed the Oracle to stay alive for a little bit longer, and then he comes and turns it around with, uh, you know, the Fortune's End of the Purifying Flames a couple of times, and that Purifying Flames early is so deadly. Yeah, it's uh, it's really strong. Getting hit by one of those does not feel fun. Especially at the level 3 mark as well, like when the damage doubles. Well, so is this Dazzle. XM, though, trying to turn it on. Nothing to say. He gets hit by the tower twice. Oh, boy. Does he have any more regen? Poison touch? Is he dead? Ember? Oh! <laughs> Last tick on the poison touch. Wow. I thought the Dazzle might go in Suicide to Tower there after the kill as well, but... Would uh, would have missed out on a few creeps, so definitely not worth it. Just going to bring some regen out instead. I mean, he'll hit level 5 here, ferry out some regen, goes, what, third level into the poison touch. I think he's fine here. Slide of Fist comes in, but he could continue to just throw a poison touch at nothing to say and make this very difficult. Grim Especially shake. once he's done with that side of Fist. Ink Swell, popping, Jinkyu, trying to TP out. A lot of damage being done on a Jinkyu, but he's able to escape. They bring a third here, but can't catch up to the Ember. It's the four minute rune spawn battle. Uh, top lane as well, they're going on SRF. Do they have the damage? I don't think they do, no. Lenny's stage going uh, really well though for, uh, for C deck, has to be said. Beastmaster especially yeah. not getting a huge amount done in the bot lane. He's doing okay, but... TB definitely dominating. Behind by about a level. Maybe maybe like 50% of a level. Take that back. Goddamn NA maths. It's not good, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> but Beastmaster, all you're really hoping for, I would say at the beginning, is to hope to get that level 6 and maybe set that up early on. Ink Swell, though, back on to Jinq, trying to set up on the bounty rune. Jinq grabs the bounty and now needs to run from the Grimstroke, which might give the opportunity to Victoria uh, to mid lane as well. other bounty rune. But yeah, mid XM, nothing to say, poison touch again, and he's dead once more. Meanwhile, Innocence goes down, and all of a sudden, Ehome, they lose two heroes. Yeah, th this triple step. This lane is so difficult for the Ember to play, and now that Dazzle's, like, he's more than a whole level ahead of him. Um, with the Ember, you, you try and play around the Flame Guard, because obviously, like, Dazzle can't break it because he has no magical damage, it's all physical. But um, it's still not enough. Like the stats are still gonna, you know, dominate the lane. You have to be ever so careful. And instead of the offlane dazzle going into the necro one and just using that to farm, he looks to have queued up uh, at least necro two. Interesting. I mean, I'm assuming you either stay necro one or go for the necro three. There's no halfway. I don't think. It seems really silly because then you know, level three, you get the dewarding potential as well. Wing strike forward on SRF, but 
fortunes and hits, and they have the damage. Purifying Flames is available. One more Ooh. shot from Innocence to get the kill. SRF unable to get away. I think that was a high roll from the Oracle damage hit there to be able to finish that one off. How many about as high as it got? I think it's four. Is it like it's not very big the variance, but forty-nine to fifty-five. Never refuse gold given. Just, just get that kill though onto the Pangolier and oh, dazzle. Jeez, he is XM at this point. Four points in the poison touch. Nothing to say. What the? Oh Jesus! The shadow wave is so deadly. And he, he is might. he just dead? dead? <laughs> Oh my god. He went into that camp and all of a sudden was taking a, a boatload of damage. And it looked like for a second he might just fall inside that camp. Uh, but this is the power of the Dazzle though. Like, it, when you pick it, as in, in this case, here where you know, like, it's going to be um, like up against one of these probably most likely core heroes in either the Ember or, you know, something fairly similar. You should be able to dominate the lane, right? Like it's what your hero is supposed to do. You can transition that into the, you know, the really quick necro one farming speed. But that hero has to be playing from ahead, I think, for it to be uh, really effective. Promo roar onto the grim stroke. Jinq with top faith beyond well. will help get that kill. And now you take a look over towards top. They've got the rolling thunder. Silar dusted up, but blink strikes away makes some distance between him and SRF and James. Blink strikes back to the neutral creeps, still trying to run. Dust wears out, so he's able to survive. As those shreds delivered, and Silar, I call him Chalice, Silar ends up uh, surviving over towards top. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. That was a good job with those blink strikes. Yeah, he did you know, a good gets job. Gets some distance, gets back, makes sure Radiant's that he's uh, you know not dying in that situation. A very good job over from this Ricky, and every time nothing to say shows himself over mid, he is just hit with this poison touch. Yeah, they have the purge from the Oracle, which helps, but like, he's not going to be there all the time, is he? Uh, Zinc used the big question mark for me at the moment. Uh, he's got this Necro book queued up, which I think is fine. Um, you know, just being able to farm on this position for Zeus always feels really good. But, uh, like, he doesn't really offer anything at this point in the game, right? Like, there's no map pressure coming out. That's why you see TB TPing top and just trying to take the towers, because he understands he can't really defend bot. Up against this Beastmaster. Good damage coming out of the tier 1 tower. Grimstrokes also made the rotation towards top, but Silar will spot him. So they have quick damage, but there's the Phantom's Embrace. Inkswell, Fortune Zam, Purifying Flames. They don't get the kill on a Victoria. Now the Rolling Thunder hits on a 3, but with nothing to say rotating, I don't think it's going to be enough. Slight comes through. They get the kill on a Jinkyu. It's SRF who gets 1. They take Innocence out. And now SRF, he's safe from the shallow grave. So dust is used. That hits on a Silar, taking out nothing to say. Four heroes gone to the side of E-Home. Tricks of the tree to try and get away from this one. He'll pop that wand, blink strike to these iron, uh, these golems, these mud golems. And well, he escapes, but a lot done by CDC over E-Home. That was a really good tricks of the trade by the Ricky there. Um, the, the one that he dodged was the last attack and it would have refreshed the poison touch as well. So they probably would have been able to catch him, but. Managing to dodge that attack keeps him alive. Uh, Faith Bian managed to push the tier two all the way down towards its um, the bot lane all towards the <laughs> managed to push the bot lane all the way towards the tier two is what I meant to say before I had a a fit. <laughs> Sorry, Twitch chat. <laughs> I feel like fit's a very British thing to say. <laughs> In America, it's not as uh, nice when somebody just kind of has a brain fart. A brain fart, yeah. Uh, faded brooch. I assume they give that to the Ember. Maybe they give it to like the Zeus or something instead. But he's certainly not going to hold it. Oh, it's the, it's the Zeus that's going to take it. Okay, fair enough. I think that's also, it's a decent choice as well, right? Because you get it's not just the movement speed you get on the Zeus, but the, the big increase in mana pool is super good on that hero. So the, the net worth might be down towards a thousand; it's almost close to two thousand. However, the experience is about four thousand ahead. Yeah, as we see, Jinku 
get taken out by SRF. He swashbuckles in, and with that combined with the ink swell is really quite the gap closer. SRF just rolls away mid lane. If they can get this mid tier one, this is going to open up so much of the map for C deck. This is the perfect move for them. Ember's coming over, but the tier one tower is almost dead now. They're going to have to, yeah, they're TPing more in. <clears throat> The question is, can they do anything with this? They'll get the deny, but anything else? Three hero smoke up on E home. Move through this jungle. Bottom SRF's there. He might die if they get the primal roar off. They saw him go into the trees, they know that he's there, but they'll turn their attention potentially over to Victoria. As there's the primal roar and the quick damage to get the kill onto the five position Grimstroke. That's fine though for Victoria. I think like the fact that your Pango doesn't die there's the big thing. He doesn't have Rolling Thunder here though. Gotta be a little bit careful. Here comes the Lizard a couple ball. seconds. Zeus might just be dead. Shadow Wave minus armor onto Jin Q trying to run for the Rolling Thunder. No level Ooh. six for a false promise, but the Rolling XM. Thunder not hitting either of those heroes, and he completely whiffs on it. So now XM, I think the same moves forward. Fortune Zane locks him up. Blink Strike comes in. They get the kill on the castle. Like more. Oh boy, James getting low. Tricks of the trade right out there. They don't have the Thunder God's Wrath for another 50 seconds. With all these heroes low, it might have been an opportunity for the Zeus, but they weren't even needed. They get the kill on the Victoria. They take out James. Double kill for Silar and Ehome grab themselves a victorious fight. I feel like the problem C Deck are having is that Radiant this Grimshoke wants to play with somebody, right, to make kills. He's got 1 1 3. Like, he wants to use this Inkswell aggressively to find things, but the hero that he wants to use it on is this Pangolier at the moment. And the way that Pango's playing is that he wants to be the one like, pushing out waves all the time to like make space so that his TB can take safe farm on the map. Like at the moment, this whole top half of the map is fine, right? So Pango wants to play bot to push the wave out constantly. And this Grimstroke is kind of stuck in limbo with where he wants to be playing. Like he doesn't have level 6 yet either, so there's no soul bind up. Radiant and we're, you know, almost 14 minutes in. Like their team fight capability on the Radiant side at the moment, just for C-Deck, isn't there. Hmm. I try to check the XP per minute, but it has everything as uh, zero. Good, good. Yeah, it's the same for me. <laughs> I was going to try to do the math in my head, but I figured there was another tool for that to see what the Grimstroke was getting 15 minutes into the game, basically, and only sitting at level 6. Thundergarten's Wrath will spot. There's three heroes here from nice. CDC inside their jungle, or four, really. But they were smoked as well. Like, that's such a good Thundergarden's Wrath by, by Jin Q. Like, as soon as they don't show, you're like, oh, okay, well... We'll just wait for the smoke to, to disappear before we make it, you know, another play on the map. And that's one of the things that you benefit with with a Zeus that's in a support role. You know, that Thunder God's Wrath isn't exactly used here in a team fight orientation where it's more used like if everybody's off the map, Thunder God's Wrath, let me get some vision, figure it out for my team, and you know get get my team some info so we could survive and not get ganked. I might try this support Zeus build Radiant's with the Necro book as well, actually. Because the, the build-up's really nice with the Double Sages mask. It gives you so much mana sustain in the laning stage. I haven't seen it before, but it makes sense. Okay, question. Nickel when point. we saw the TB yesterday, we talked about how he didn't go for second item BKB, right? And it kind of slowed the whole tempo of the game down for what C Dick want to do. And it feels very much like the same thing again here, where the Pango and the Dazzle want to fight early, but oh, SRF and top lane as well, Zin Q. Zin Q getting taken out, but not as big of a deal as, uh, you know, losing that Pangolier over bottom who's sitting in the three position. Do you see what I mean, though? Like, this is like, like the, the supports are playing up. Top side of the map, but the Pango is the one that has to sit bot. Radiant so, like, this Grimstroke Pango fun. combination just isn't there at all at the moment. And I think it, it feels really bad for um, for C Deck that they have to play like that. Radiance bottom tower and Beastmaster with the Necro 3 gonna absolutely rip through this bottom tier 2. 
And so they've got two Necrobooks going on right now. They've got a Necro 1 for the Zeus, of course. He's going into the Yags next to get that Nimbus available. But the Necro 3, as well as the Boars for the Beastmaster, are able to push through these towers and, you know, really put some pressure onto these lanes. Yeah, and if you look at the Ward Vision at the moment for the Radiant as well, C-Deck, like, they just don't see anything. They've just put a, their Ward down top lane, but... This Necro 3 is going to complete, like, completely take over the map for uh, for Ehome. And they're going to control so much of it. And Faith Beyond's just taking this mid-tier 1 for free as well. As the uh, Necrobook has so much damage and backdoor potential. Radiant's Easy peasy. So they managed to take two towers for the price of one, effectively. With uh, C-Deck only being able to take the top tier 2. And they used Metamorphosis to get that top tier 2. So this might even be an opportunity for Ehome to fight once that meta is down. I think it, Beastmaster is really close to Vlad's, right? I don't know if he has the whole thing. Oh, he has 2.1k gold. Jeez. So he's a, he's 100 gold or so off. And when that comes out, I think that's the go time. Mm, poison touch. We're going to chase this Oracle. He'll look to use the False Promise, but as he was trying to key it off, the Phantom's Embrace came in from Victoria, so they get the kill. Essence rings for Beast Master. 10 8. Mm, yeah, Essence rings coming in. Is he gonna. He sent it back. Yeah, I think I think he gives it to the Ember. Yeah, he is coming out on his career now. It's just a better item for him. Like the mana regen feels really good on Ember, and the extra burst of HP is makes his blade mail more effective as well. Like all sorts. Uh, he's going Battle Fury on Ricky, by the way, to help him scale a little bit more, which I think is fine. Yeah, Diffuse or Battle Fury. It's pretty standard at the moment. I remember when Ricky, people started building uh, Battle Fury on Ricky's second item. They kind of laughed a bit, but uh, Grimshoke. Oh, yeah, a lot of damage coming in from the Necro Creeps as well as the side of a Searing Chains from Nothing to Say. Faith Beyond gets the kill onto Victoria, and immediately Faith Beyond moving his way towards Roche. Blink Strike onto the Creeps. Sour gets in. They'll try to take this first Aegis, but the scan comes out from CDC, and they'll know that they're inside the pit. I mean, there's no meta for 30 seconds still. They evacuate the pit, and that's because, well, Amber, he's forward and trying to go after the CDC side. Sawar with uh, minus armor, thanks to the bad juju. Goes back towards the road pit. They'll go and maybe try to take this. I think we'll maybe looking to draw CDC in and then engage. Yeah, they really wanted to just try to get a free rush there, but... C deck weren't going to give it to them. They are going to smoke up, actually. Dyer are scanning. They do have wards on the Grimshook, but hmm. Jin Q top, two thousand gold away from picking up that Ags. The rest of the team sitting over towards mid. It looks like they're going to smoke, or at least have the thoughts to do so. And that's exactly what they do. Is they're Outpost is captured with 30 seconds left remaining until it hits that 20 minute mark. Side of Fist, Searing Chains looking for the Rolling Thunder. And now SRF coming in, but the Soulbind hits onto the Oracle and nobody else. Primal Roar stops the Rolling Thunder in its steps. And they've got the Shallow Grave to keep Victoria alive. Nothing to say throws a remnant towards the back lines. Hasn't popped that Metamorphosis just yet. Terribly looking for the opportunity to go in. And Ame, he wants that spot. But. Ricky they've nearby. taken away their vision, though, on, that they put down on the Radiant side. So, I don't think c are going to feel fist. confident here. Searing Chains, they've got the Silence! And pops the Manta. Able to leave. So, after all that, nobody dies. <laughs> yeah, there's not really any burst damage, though, is there? Apart from, like, possibly the Zeus. Like, it's all kind of very, you know, gradual throughout the whole fight. You know, from this Ember, from the Ricky as well. Unless they get onto the back lines where, like, the Grimshook and the Rubik are, it's really difficult for the Dyer to take a fight, I think. A uh, good roar, though, to keep the uh, Rolling Thunder in place. Make sure he doesn't get too much use out of that. Does he have Hood coming out on the career? The Pango? Oh, he does. He's a tanky boy now. And Greaves on the Dazzle as well. Wow. They are, I feel like this has to be the time for C-Deck where they... They feel really confident. But again, like, Ame's going for the second item Scardi, like he did yesterday. Instead of the BKB. And so they, they're just hitting different timings again.
Ehome kind of doing a good job of staying away from this CDC team right now. Again, with this four position, Zeus, I, I feel like if there's ever a point where they feel uncomfortable or they're looking for vision on CDC, they just throw out the Thunder God's Wrath and they can really work around that information. They're pushing bottom so far with uh, Beastmaster continuing to farm inside the jungle and, well, he's got himself 2200 gold saved up again. I wonder what he goes. Yeah, he's got Blink queued up. I think the big thing for the dire side is this Shinku Axe when it comes out. It's really close now. He's like 300 gold off. That's going to be such a, a big advantage for them with that. Uh, with the little. Uh, what's it even called? The Nimbus? Um, Nimbus, that's it. The thing oh, have too I forgotten with that, that is he's. Look at where he is in terms of net worth. He started off pretty slow, and now he's being afforded all this space to just continue to farm. And, and it goes back to this Necro book, too. That has really accelerated his farm. Yeah, and he's going to run back to base here just to collect the last of his uh, his axe. And then it means whenever the Beastmaster roars somebody now, as long as it's not the Pangolin Rolling Thunder, they can just lay the Nimbus over the top and just try and, you know, get through them really quickly. If you get the Nimbus damage with the uh, Lightning Bolt and the Thunder God's Wrath on top, they will die relatively quickly now. Smoke play from Ehome setting up. There we go. They finish off the Battle Fury on the Ricky as well. They are inside Roche. I believe they got a kill onto the Hawk. So Ehome know that this is happening. Nimbus is down and look at the damage onto the Grimstroke. So that takes away the Soulbind. He's also dead for 30 seconds. Ame comes. Out of the pit, Primal Roar now on the back Rubik. looking over to the Ricky. They've got themselves, or onto the Rubik, excuse me. They've got Ooh. themselves the Shallow Grave. Has nothing to say, he's taken over this fight very quickly with the Sunder used, as well as the Metamorphosis coming in from Ame. Ame looking for more XM. He's without the Shallow Grave for eight more seconds. They'll buy back on the Ember, nothing to say comes back in. Rolling Thunder hits onto the Oracle with the right click damage. Heavy from Ame, they get the kill. Eho maybe second guessing whether or not they want to go in on this. Yeah, they're really struggling. They, they need to be able to kill off this Dazzle in the fights, but he's so tanky now with the Greaves as well. Um, Ember actually bought back in that fight, by the way. Um, and he came back in straight away. So did the Rubik. So they really want to try and finish off this Roche here on, uh, on RNG. But how long does the meta have left? Just a little bit. You've got Nimbus might just... to throw into the pit. Yeah. And Ember might be able to try and steal it here. Oh, he doesn't have any remnants, actually. Yeah, the Roche is just going to die. And this Ricky feels really underwhelming at the moment. Like, he, he's not really getting onto the targets that he needs to. But TB's actually by himself here. Troublesome. A... There's the Nimbus. Oh, no. screen and the kill with Tricks of the Trade. That Aegis is so quickly dispatched. Now they've got the Flame Guard on the Rubik. James trying to do what he can with the Toe. Kinesis hitting on nothing to say. We'll bump back in the previous engagement. They've got the Searing Chains now on the TV. And they do more with this. Industry. Smoke screen down. Primal Roar out onto XM. Rolling Thunder, and now he's coming all the way through. Soulbind hitting the Ember. He needs to leave. But Telekinesis is out once again. They've got the Poison Touch as well as the damage, but the False Promise from Innocence keeps nothing to say alive. Will it be that way after the False Promise runs out? Innocence kind of runs forward, maybe trying to help nothing to say, but oh, they'll get the, the Oracle. Now they've got themselves the Shallow Grave out on a James. Ricky, uh, hello? What? All five heroes are there, and he ends up dead. James also stole the False Promise to survive. I mean, that goes that was, surprisingly well, well for CDC. Sila, that was so weird. Like, he didn't commit the whole fight, even when Ember was going in and everything. He was just just waiting the whole time. He, he felt unsafe. And then the one time he does decide to commit is when there's just five heroes around him and he's by himself. Weird. They're pushing pretty fast through mid. Faith Beyond doing exactly what he needs to here. Get the boars, get the Necro 3s going. And that was Thunder God's Wrath stolen from Rubik. Thrown out back to the E home site with Jin sitting low. Swashbuckle gets the kill now on the Zeus. Faith Beyond, look at he didn't commit into pushing bottom just yet. He needs this creep wave. And then he'll go. They have meta off again as well. Like I think the Beastmaster has to rat here. If he TP's back, then they're gonna lose the, the base anyway. He needs to just try and get whatever he can in return. And they have the glyph on the Radiant side. 
Another creep wave coming in in just a second. They lose the tier 3 over mid. Can they get themselves at least a set of racks? They're still without the Zeus for 17 more seconds. Smoke screen is down, and Beastmaster's come back. But Beastmaster's come back. He's left his boars. He's not microing them up, uh, to anything. Now, finally, they go forward. Doesn't matter, though. I mean, they didn't damage the tier 3 at all, really, in the bot lane. So... Really well played by RNG. They uh, get the first set of racks down. Or sort of not the first set, but the first melee racks down, at least. Which is really big. And uh, Ember is still so far away from Beekeeper you now. He's really poor after using that buyback around the Roche Pit. And Sila has, like, this Power Fury Diffusal, but he, he still doesn't feel comfortable going into fights. He thinks he's going to die straight away, so... I don't know about this. It's, um... A little bit dodgy. Mind breaker on the TB. Might just decide to keep the vampire fangs. But... Meta down for another 74 seconds. They use that Thunder God's Wrath. <laughs> and then Rubik says, anything you can do, I can do better. Throws it right <laughs> back at him. I like that. I think Zinki used it second, actually, on the Zeus. Because he's like, okay, well, they might be smoked and they might be using Thunder God's Wrath for vision. So I'm going to use it back myself. Oh, Primal Roar. Nimbus is down. They've got the Shallow Grave, the Necro Creeps, as well as the Boars. He's forced the Swashbuckle away. SRF will survive with the Guardian Greaves coming through from Dazzle. I'm really surprised that Sylar, considering he feels like not confident to go into fights at all, that he's not building BKB next. Maybe he feels like if he doesn't build damage, then the, the team isn't really going to do anything. So he feels pressured to have to like be more greedy with his item build. Although he walked into the last fight and just was surrounded by five heroes. Yeah, but the, the thing is, like the whole the the whole fight duration before that, he was just sitting on the side, even though there was no dust on him or anything. It was, it was very odd. Very very odd. Mm. And I love that Dazzle's going for this Lincoln's next as well. Especially with the cooldown reduction that he has from the bad juju. The thing is, so if, uh, if Ehome can kill the TB, the CDC is only up 3,000 gold. But how does the team isn't team? as farmed? Yeah, I mean, the question is, how do they kill him? They, they were able to get him killed mid immediately, but he had an Aegis, but now he's got the Satanic, so it's a bit of a different story. They're starting to TP top lane here as well. Really want to try and defend this tier two. Ooh, good Thunder God's Wrath spotting that CD Seer back towards top and trying to make a defense. Yeah, I think they were smoked as well. Yeah. Zinku's on a mad one today. He's going straight into the refresher as well, by the way. I don't know if he's going to have the mana to, to uh, combine everything together, but. Not for a long time, but innocence. Ending up dead to Ame. They also Unfortunately, stole the Forgeon's End. If uh, if he ever gets to hit him once with a Scardi, the Oracle kind of has no chance of being able to get away. Faith Beyond playing back towards top. TB's Courier coming forward Radiant with three TPs. Interesting, Left Dazzle's actually only just hit level 17. I thought, considering how the game had been going for them, that he might be slightly higher leveled, but... Oh, he, he did just eat the time, actually. Okay, so he's going to hit the level 18 here now. Yeah, actually, the experience is more in favor of Ehome by uh, a couple thousand. I guess they have been grouping up more on the uh, side of C-Deck, though. I think he's going to come snip, snatch that uh, DD away. Dazzle's going to be like, oh, crap. I wanted to leave that for my TB, but never mind. Innocence going Aether Lens, Jinkyu, like you said, going Refresher. He's also got the Quickening Charm, so it's nice to have that cooldown reduction. And Ricky, yeah, going straight damage. You were saying maybe if nobody goes damage or nobody can do damage, he needs to do so, even though if he, you know, he won't get this BKB. And he's going to the Daedalus now. The thing is, like, the BKB is not amazing for him. Like, because he still has to worry about the Soulbind, right? Because Ricky versus Grimstroke goes both ways, right? If the Ricky ever gets on top of the Grimstroke, he, like, he just dies instantly on the Grimstroke. But 
Rick, if Ricky or Ember ever get soul binded up, they can't use their maneuverability in the fights like Blink Strike, you know, Remnants to be able to get around and try and pick off the, the weaker targets. So, I don't know, maybe he just feels like he needs the damage. And he has Orb of Destruction now as well, so... He, uh, he does output a lot. TB, he's going BKB next. Ame waiting a long time to get that BKB, and now there's a Thunder God's Wrath once again to spot CDC backing off, but they've got the telekinesis onto the Ricky, and Fortune Zen was enough to root him up and then get the Rolling Ooh. Thunder to come on back. So bouncing back and forth, Innocence is here ready with the False Promise. They'll use it, and now False Promise immediately oh, stolen by James. Absolutely amazing. They've got the stun now. Onto this Ricky, and he tries to get away with tricks of the trade, but after the false promise is over, he'll end up dead anyway. Uh, really great leash by uh, by the Grimstroke there, making sure they just stayed together. The Ricky couldn't blink away, like we just talked about. And this is going to be go time for them. They have Meta up again, so they're actually looking towards bot lane. Yeah, with the TV. I was going to say, I think they just run down mid now. Like, the thing is, they could just go top lane afterwards because there's no tier two there. So even if they feel like they don't want to end the game, they can just go for another set of racks and be a little bit more safe. Beastmaster's pushing top lane, Ember's pushing bot lane. They don't so have they will need to do this quickly. Radiant's top going to back, actually. Yeah, <gasps> Lincoln's broken, and that was on the Primal Roar. Not exactly what you would have want, but the Nimbus is down right on top of the Dazzle, as well as the Clumsy Net. XM taking a lot of damage. But look at this TV, like... Ripping through this all the buildings are gone. And also XM ends up dead. So the tier 3 tower survives with 75 health. What I don't understand is why do tier 3 towers not get HP regen but tier 2s do? Has the benefit of being up a set of stairs. I, I guess it would make pushing high ground a lot more difficult. But would value my... would. Uh, Make my tree ent protector only player account Radiant's less valuable. I guess. Attack. Gotta bring back uh, shrines on the in the base. Uh, Rubik stole false promise again, by the way. Yeah, he so... stole that when they had that fight, or uh, when they killed the Ricky. So he is just uh, being on it. Yeah, we, we talked about whether James Rubik gold would ahead be... too. Would be, yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, would be anywhere near as good as we hoped it would, and apparently it is. Remnant forward, Nimbus down, side of Fist Searing Chains, SRF locked up for a moment, but Victoria, he's looking to get a soul bind out there. Ami moves forward, the ink swell, and now the one in trouble is nothing to say, the BKB's been popped. He pops that blade mail as well, Rolling Thunder coming into the back lines, looking over at Innocence. Innocence doesn't want to use the false promise on himself. Oh no! And Primal Roar hits on to this Pangolier, but there's the Stolen False Promise. Sunder hits on a Jinq, so back to full health is Ame. XM forced the Shallow Grave. James is a little bit trouble. low, but he's got the Telekinesis False Promise now onto the si onto the Sire Ricky. Wing Strike forward, can he get a kill? Yes, he can. Finally takes out James, has buyback, and now he needs to get out of this one. James finally uses that buyback. Thunder God's Wrath gets the kill on XM. He does not have buyback. Oh my, Ehom, opportunities arising. 14 seconds, so they have that Sunder available. He has to change, though. He doesn't have buyback, by the way. If this Timber, so, if this Terrible dies, this is so much trouble. He's got Sunder in four, though, so he survives, and he'll be able to turn around in just a moment. The Stroke of Fate won't land, but the Shield Crash will. Innocence ends up dead, and now further back, nothing to say needs to leap. Zinky actually kill. sold his uh, Necro book at On the, the start of that fight to afford Refresher as well. And it still didn't go their way. <laughs> Bounty. It almost did. Almost. But it's losing Silo is, is such a, a such a setback. Uh, Panga with Mindbreaker has a gem now, by the way, as well. So he's. They're looking to control the map back the other way in the beast of the, in the same way the Beastmaster was doing before with the Necro 3. I, I actually think the scariest hero for Ehome now is, is Jinkyu. Like, the amount of burst damage he can put, output all at once is, is pretty bonkers. And he's going to see that they're in the pit now, but... 
can't do anything to get to them. His next Thunder God's Wrath will line up with the Refresher. The question is, will it matter? Hmm. Invisibility. I don't have a lot of faith in E-Home at the moment, I'll be honest. I mean, the Dazzle Which... is still lacking buyback, but he has cheese now as well, right? So, yeah. it's going to be so much harder to kill. I'm a bit shocked that it's still just a 3,000 net worth lead. Mm -hmm. Well, it's mainly just because the Pango and the Dazzle don't scale massively well going into the late game, right? Oh, oh boy, Ember. Nothing to say. Spotted, throwing thunder. Can he get out? BKB, side of fists and the remnant. He'll survive. It costs him the BKB. I think he's okay with uh, using that, though, to stay up. Oh, illusionist cape for the TB. Oh, no. What a disaster for a free home. <laughs> Sometimes you just get an illusionist cape on TB, and the game just ends. Faith Beyond trying to keep this tier 3 bottom from uh, ending up dead. Double Thunder God's Wrath is available. They're making their way towards bottom with the smoke. They'll TP away. Faith Beyond, though, he stays, at least for now. Ooh, Faith Beyond. Uh, spotted and in trouble. Everybody else is going to join in from CDC. They'll get the kill onto the Beastmaster. He uh, does not have the gold for buyback, so he is dead for 80 seconds. Oh, uh, One thing we haven't talked about, by the way, when you use the reflection on the Beastmaster, you are giving yourself a free inner Beast Aura every single time, which uh, TB is absolutely loving. Okay. Used again. They get the Grimshook mid with Sila uh, jumping in the main in the first place. So at least they've managed to take somebody off before CDEC can get this, you know, death ball going again in the bot lane. So it is a 4 on 4, but without Faith Beyond, I mean, it's so much of their net worth just disappearing. He's actually top of the... Uh, Speed laid down. He's top of the net worth for the Dire, yeah. Yeah. I will say no more Metamorphosis, though. That might help out. We've got the Searing Chains as well as the Double Nimbus. The Venn Diagram's been made, but immediately the Sunder comes in. Nothing to say, sitting over the BKB being popped by the Ember. They look to try and get the kill on Ame, but Ame hit with the Shallow Grave, so he'll survive this. He's still within the Nimbus, takes out both. Rolling Thunder comes in. They haven't gotten a kill on anybody on either side just yet, but BKB running out on Ame. So Ame, he's got to the Sunder available in 20 seconds. So going into this for Eho might be uh, a bit problematic. And they did buy back on the... Uh, oh, they didn't buy back on the Grimshook, actually. He's just TP'd back in. Okay. And he's found a Flicker as well, which is actually really helpful up against the the uh, Ricky. Yeah, the Rubik's going to take that one. Hmm. And they give Go the Prince's knife to the... At the 40 minute mark. Ooh. Yeah, true. Get some nice little boost of XP. Uh, Dazzle takes the Prince's Knife, by the way, which is going to be really helpful up against this Ember. A little bit of extra lockdown. That outpost helped uh, Zeus get to that level 20. Potentially be... a big deal. Yeah, it could be a big difference, actually. He's got the Quickening Charm as well for a little bit of cooldown reduction, which is nice. Pressure and AD. The problem is for him that, like, this this TP has 3.4k HP, so even if they roar him and get, like, all their damage on him from the Zeus, I still don't think he dies quickly enough. Like, he has Sunder, he has BKB, he has Satanic as well, so there's so many different ways for him to live. Like, even on top of that, there's Greaves, there's a Shallow Grave from the Dazzle, I'm pretty sure if you don't bring this TB down quickly in a fight, like he, he can just sustain himself the whole way through. It's a tough one for for e home. Just 
feels so one-sided despite the fact that uh you know the, the game is close in terms of net worth it just it, it feels like it shouldn't be this close primal roar is used bkb was popped there but primal roar now stolen by the rubik oh no not one you really want to give away that's for as sure as if ember wasn't having a hard enough game oh, already rolling thunder oh srf gets bounced by the stairs if this ember gets roared now in the fight i mean it means oracle's basically just gonna have to save the false promise for when somebody gets roared Forty-seven hundred gold for Siler. But now that he's giving away Primal Roar. I mean, BKB. Then get hit with, if you buy out on the BKB, then you get it with the Primal Roar. It would just feel terrible. I think he's probably going to go Butterfly. I'm not hundred percent sure on for the Ricky, but. So it's a difficult choice for him because there's so many different things he could go for. Like if he feels like, you know, he could go for just a rapier at this point as well. If he feels That's like they're, they're really falling behind and struggling. Does have 5,200 gold saved up. He's not too far away from a rapier. Ame. Everybody's here to try and get this done. They do smoke. The rest of the team is surprisingly far enough away from CDC where maybe if they had the burst potential they could get him killed, but he's just got so much here that really makes that impossible. Oh, they clutch the Ricky with the lift. Oh boy, yeah, this is uh, troublesome, but the False Promise is there, so that'll get the save. The double Nimbus is down. I believe they use their Refresher and the Thunder God's Wrath. They use that Primal Roar. They look over at the Grimstroke, but the Rolling Thunder comes through. Ricky trying to get the kill of the Grimstroke. They get the kill of Victoria. They look over at Nothing to Say as the BKB is no longer there, but the Rolling Thunder hits on a Chalice. They are trying to kill off Nothing to Say, but with the Remnant, makes an escape. And this and lift. Down he goes. So Ember, he's got buyback, will probably be forced to use it. He's going to be so poor, though, if he uses the buyback. He's good. Ricky buys a point booster. He's going Axe or Scarly. I feel like the Scarly doesn't really make a difference. Oh, they catch the lift on the Zeus, though. Oh, it's not the Zeus, the Oracle, sorry. Oracle trying to run, Innocence doesn't have False Promise or anything, Ame moving in pretty deep, but he has Sunder in just a couple of seconds, Silaro even without the, without the Terribly, he is just destroyed, they buy back on all three heroes, so all the things, all of a sudden things start opening up for CDC. Look over, Silar, uh, Silar, Soulbind, Silar, I don't know what you're thinking going in that deep, you're dead and that's probably the game. That was way too far, way too deep without your team. And now the Metamorphosis has been popped by the Terrorblade. How do you even jump into this? And I think the reality of the situation is you just don't. And yeah, there it is. GG is called by Ehome. CDC steal game one from Ehome. Yeah, really well played by CDC. I thought Sila had a, a really off game, this first one. Uh, you know, we've, we've seen him play already in a different series and he looks a lot better then. So I'm really disappointed for him, you know, for himself, that he, he's going to look back at this game and think, you know, I, I really could have done better here. Um, I also think nothing to say, having a really difficult time at the start of this game, you know, laning up against the Dazzle is not easy for him. Uh, they gave a lot of their farm priority to Faith Beyond by letting him just shove out waves all the time and, you know, try and split push, but nobody ever really press pressured Arme this game. Like, he hasn't died once on this TB. Um, and we've seen, I feel like we've seen this a few times now in different games where, like, heroes like Naga, you know, TB as well. If they don't get pressure and they don't die the whole game, then it's really difficult for them to lose. Um, like if we compare.